Alright guys, thanks for watching this Diagnostic World video. The purpose of making this video um, is really just to give you an idea if you're uh, uh, maybe thinking about buying a W204 C-Class um, or you've currently got a C-Class and maybe you're a little bit worried about uh, the type of things that might go wrong on it. Um, I personally own a 2007 C-Class C220 CDI uh, and that has 173,000 miles on the clock so it has um, been around the world a few times if you like, not literally but um, it may well have um, with it having such a high high volume uh, miles on it. So um, I just really wanted to sort of in my experience the things that have failed on my particular car because I can pretty much guarantee if they're failing on my car they're probably going to fail on your car as well. Um, it doesn't really depend, these things don't really depend upon how well you service your car and how well you, you know, upkeep your car. Um, it's just things that are just naturally going to happen and it's not something to sort of worry about too much as long as you can nip the, uh, the problems in the bud as soon as possible you should be okay. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is the thermostat. Um, when I was driving the car what I would find would happen would be that the, um, the sort of the temperature needle would, if it was driving it would probably go down to sort of like the first marker um, and then if I was sort of stationary sitting in traffic with with the the engine running but at idle you'd probably find that the uh, the needle would go sort of above the middle marker so it was it was generally running quite hot when it was sitting at idle um, and it was running quite cold when I was actually driving the car no matter if I was driving it sort of 20 30 40 or even 70 80 miles per hour um, so I have made a short video on this on YouTube um, I can't remember the title of it now it's something like uh, C-Class thermostat symptoms um, and the good news is I mean you can pick up a replacement thermostat for about 30 pounds um, fitting it it can be done yourself although it is a bit tricky you will need to get to it um, there's a few sort of, uh, sort of parts that you need to remove from the engine first of all to actually get to the thermostat um, it's recommended that you do follow a guide because if you don't know what you're doing then um, it could get really tricky and you could damage some of the engine parts as well so I'm sure you don't need me to tell you this in any case um, but the thermostat is a, a vital part of the engine with regards to the, uh, the cooling system so um, that is the first thing on the list that will most likely fail like I say um, my car currently has 173,000 miles on the clock so um, you might be, you know, you might be still running at 100,000, 120,000 and your thermostat's fine. It probably, it probably is fine, but probably some point in the near future, you're probably going to need to think about changing that. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for you to do, to actually go ahead and change it um, before you get any sort of failure or any catastrophic failure on that. Um, so that's the, uh, the tip number one and the item number one which will most likely fail on your C-Class. Alright, the second thing on the list is the heater, blower, motor and resistor. Um, if your HVAC system, which is um, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, um, tends to run at sort of odd speeds. So if it starts running at sort of, sort of speeds on its own, so if it, you're not controlling what it's actually doing. Um, or it runs sort of like flat out all of the time, uh, the chances are you're going to need a, a new heater, uh, heater blower uh, resistor. Um, this is what essentially pumps the air through the system um, and if one of these goes faulty you'll probably know about it because you won't, the, the, basically the, uh, the air will be coming out not according to the settings you're putting in. Um, so that's a very common failure on not just C-Class W204 uh, but on all Mercedes cars uh, the amount of Mercedes cars that I've seen that need one of these replacing is uh, is phenomenal so don't worry about this again too much you're probably going to pay about £30 for a replacement for this car um, changing it over yourself is is one of the easiest jobs you'll ever do in this vehicle um, it's underneath the passenger well if you're, if you're in a right hand car it's underneath the passenger's glove box so there's like a so a panel above where your feet would sit um, and we'll, we're going to do a, a guide on this real soon in any case because ours does, does need replacing um, so it's just a few screws to take the panel off unclip the electrical connection uh, so twist it out put the new one in and then sort of button everything back up 
uh, but that one knee replacing as I say £30 um, or you can just take it to a garage and they should probably only charge you half an hour to 45 minutes of labour for this because it is such an easy job. Um, so that's the second thing on the list which will probably fail on your C-Class. Um, Alright so the third item on our list of things that are uh, bound to break in your C-Class uh, are the glow plugs. The glow plugs is what will preheat the engine so when you switch the ignition on you'll find your little squiggly glow plug light and this will uh, while this light is on, what it's doing is it's injecting heat into the engine, so it's preheating the engine. Now generally, only when this light has gone off should you start the car. Um, there will be a few exceptions of course, obviously if your one of your glow plugs or all of your glow plugs are failing, uh, or the glow plug control unit, which is also known as a glow plug module, if that has failed, what will generally happen is, you'll start the engine but the glow plug the glow plug light will either come back on uh, or never go off to start with and then it'll, um, it'll stay on when you're actually driving for around about a minute or so. Um, now we've done a video on this ourselves because we had a glow plug which needed to be changed out. You can, if you want, change all four at the same time. We just changed one glow plug. We only had one glow plug faulty. Uh, the, the way you'll find out, if you've got the, the sort of squiggly little line on your dashboard, use this kit, it's called the iCarsoft i980 kit and it's available at Diagnostic World, it's, that's it there, Diagnostic World, it's www.diagnostic-world.com and then what happens is this will plug into the diagnostic port and it will uh, allow you to read the fault codes in the glow plug system so it's basically going to tell you which glow plug is faulty um, or if the actual glow plug module is faulty the glow plug module is also a very common failure, so don't assume that it's going to be a faulty glow plug. Um, so like I say, we, I have made a video on changing over the glow plugs in your... If it, our mind's a four-cylinder engine, I will add. Um, if it's the, the six-cylinder engine, the guide is it, it's probably going to be kind of the same, but I mean, the principles are the same. It's just maybe the, the sort of the access and the location might be a little bit different. Uh, so <clears throat> use this now the glow plugs I think we paid about 14 14 15 pounds for a replacement glow plug uh, and it took me about an hour to do it's not really a labor-intensive job you just want to make sure you do it right because um, what I would advise is you to actually um, try and remove the glow plug when it's actually hot when the engine's hot because uh, if you do when it's cold you're prone to actually snapping the glow plug um, you do not want to snap, snap the glow plug inside the engine because that is going to cost you a lot of money uh, to put that right. You'll need to take that to a garage, you'll probably need to drill into it and pull it out that way. Uh, so try and do it when the engine's warm. Uh, so that's the third thing on the list, the glow plugs. So the fourth thing on the list is the EGR valve. Uh, a lot of people do get EGR valve problems with their Mercedes. Um, Again, what I would advise you to do is, it's probably the symptoms of an EGR valve, probably, you're probably going to get a check engine light first of all, um, and you know, pull up a code, I can't remember the code off the top of my head, but we have had it before, so I'll try and get a copy of the code and I'll put it on the screen right now. Um, well, it should be there unless I forget. So the uh, you, you get an EGR valve uh, fault code, and basically the EGR valve, what it does is it takes a portion of the exhaust gases and recirculates them back into the cylinders um, of the engine. So it, it, it's designed to reduce the emissions basically um, and your sort of carbon footprint if you like. Um, but what happens a lot of the time is this, these EGR valves will get clogged up with soot and they begin to, they, they can't basically perform as they were designed to because it's so full of uh, sort of not gum but suit as I say black thick black suit um, so what you can do is you can either replace it which is probably going to be the most expensive thing to do um, but in some cases you might have no choice but to change it over uh, what I would try doing first of all though is actually cleaning it now you can buy special EGR valve cleaner which will allow you to clean off all the suit um, and you should be able to sort of get it scrubbed and get it you know back and looking as good as it was when it was new on the inside in any case with a lot of work don't don't assume that's just going to happen in five minutes you know you really need to work at it 
and getting all the sort of nooks and crannies. And then what you could do is put the EGR valve back in, clear the cords and see how you get on. If the check engine light doesn't come back on, um, which in a lot of cases it won't, um, then you know, perfect, you've actually, you've actually saved yourself a lot of money. Um, so the EGR valve, I think, let me just double check, I can't remember off the top of my head how much uh, the jet, because I didn't actually change it on mine. Um, what I did was cleaned it out. Uh, again, we've put a video on how to actually remove the EGR valve because it's okay getting the, uh, the two bolts out, two or three bolts, I can't remember. Um, but the next sort of tricky thing is you'll find that it's really, really stuck in there. So uh, what I did was got an old bike lock and I sort of pull on it and that way you can sort of loosen it out. Um, I'm looking here and you're looking at nearly 200 pounds for replacement EGR valve. I'm sure you'll do your own checks in any case on that. Um, so that's the fourth thing on the list, the EGR valve, which is a common failure in the C-Class W204. And finally, the fifth thing on our list is the MAP sensor. The MAP sensor is very small, it's probably around about that size, and you'll probably find it located on the engine intake, uh, the, the air intake, sorry, next to the air filter and next to the mass airflow meter. Um, now I'm reading this from the website here, um, and the MAP, MAP sensor converts engine vacuum stroke manifold pressure to an electrical signal so the computer knows how much load the engine is under. Uh, this, data, this, sorry, this data is the basis for fuel delivery and timing control. The MAP sensor is typically located in the air cleaner, fender wall, firewall, intake manifold or under the dash. Uh, well, like I say, in this car, pull the bonnet up, you probably find it uh, right next to the mass airflow meter on the left hand side, sort of, um, sort of near the headlights kind of area. Um, and you'll, it's only about that small, I'll put a picture of it on the, uh, the screen here. Uh, but that is a common failure. Um, that is generally, I mean, I think ours went at about, it was about 105,000 miles, I think it went on, on our vehicle, something like that in any case. Um, so that needs to be replaced. The good news is that's only about 20 pounds as well. So that is not a problem. Um, and again, the i980 kit, this is what we use to actually diagnose the fault. Um, the trouble codes, again, off the top of my head again, I can't remember what they are, but I'll put them on screen. And very easy to fit, it's just two screws. Ah, but you do need special screws. Uh, you need five star uh, torque screws with a, with a little uh, hole in the middle. Uh, most torque screws in the torque sets, you'll probably find they have six stars on, but the Mercedes ones, they use five star, which are actually anti-tamper, uh, so they're less common. So that's what you'll need to remove the map sensor. Uh, once you've got the two screws out, just pull the old one out, remove the electrical connection, put the new one back in, very simple. Uh, again, clear the cords with the i980 kit, and then you're away. Uh, you'll also clear the check engine light, which is which should illuminate if you uh, if you do need a faulty map sensor, uh, so replacement map sensor, or indeed map sensor. Um, so that's it. That's our five items. Um, I know there are a lot more. If you find that you've got something that you think is a, a really big common failure in these cars, um, by all means put it in the comments box below. Um, or put a comment in if you've had one of these items fail in your vehicle as well. Um, like I say, it's, don't get too disheartened about it. And certainly if you're thinking about buying one of these cars and you're thinking now, mm, well, these, you know, these are quite big things. They're, they're not that big things, to be honest with you. Um, the thermostat is probably the biggest one because that is potentially engine damaging. But so long as you can get to that before it causes any catastrophic damage, then I don't see any reason why you should have any problems. Um, so that's it, like I say, put any comments in the box. Uh, if you think this has helped you out, by all means, give it a, a thumbs up on the uh, on the thumbs section. And that's about it. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope it's helped.